Okay, today we're going to talk about some more shortcuts, some more methods on how to show that two triangles are congruent. And today we're going to deal with uh, the angle side angle and angle angle side methods. So they're very similar to side 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 and side angle side, but it's just a different combination of three congruent pieces. And then the angle side angle method, this time we have two pairs of corresponding congruent angles. So I have one pair of congruent angles there, another pair right there, and then uh, my pair of sides that correspond that are congruent are included between the angles. That means that that side uh, touches both vertices where my angles are that I have marked. So you can see that this side that's marked is going to touch that angle that I've highlighted in green and this one that I've highlighted in yellow. Same thing over here, my side that's marked touches the green and yellow angle. That means that side's included between those two angles and that's angle, side, angle. The other method has two pairs of angles that are congruent and one pair of sides, but this time the side is not included between the two angles. So here I have one pair of angles I have a second pair of angles. Those are right angles, which are going to be congruent, so we can call them congruent angles. And then we have one pair of corresponding congruent sides. And you can see now that this side over here and this side over here, they both touch the yellow angle, but they don't touch the green one. So they're not included. So instead of calling it angle side angle, we call it angle angle side. So two pairs of congruent angles, one pair of congruent sides, where the side is not included. So sometimes it's a little tricky determining if it's angle, angle, side, or angle, side, angle. So it's just going to take a little bit of practice. So let's do a couple. Remember the reflexive property. If uh, two triangles share a side or they share an angle, then that side or angle is going to be congruent in both triangles. And so that's one thing we're always going to look for straight away when we're trying to decide if two triangles are congruent. And so I have reflexive property right here, so I'm going to go ahead and mark that. And I'm going to see that I have one pair of angles with two arcs. I have another pair of angles with one arc. And in both of these triangles, this side that I marked, and I'll go over in purple, touches the green and blue angle, touch the green and blue angle in both triangles. So I have two pairs of congruent angles, one pair of congruent sides. That side touches both of the angles in each triangle, and so that is an angle side angle congruence. Over here, I have reflexive property again. So I'll mark that. I have two right angles, so those will be congruent. I have two angles with one arc in them, so those will be congruent. So I have two pairs of congruent angles and one pair of congruent sides. So I definitely have congruent triangles. Now I have to decide, is it angle, angle, side, or angle, side, angle? So in my triangle on the left, my purple line touches only the green angle, but not the yellow. In my triangle on the right, my purple line touches the green angle and not the yellow. So I don't have a pair of congruent sides that are in between my pair of congruent angles. So I have angle, angle, side here because that purple side is not between the green and yellow, green and yellow. And it might be good when you're uh, starting this out and you know getting the hang of this to maybe use some colors like I am here when you are determining the pairs of congruent angles and sides. Let's look at a couple non-examples. So it's important to look at both triangles. Don't just look at one triangle, because if you looked at this triangle, you might think that I have side angle side, similar to what we did last lesson. I have a pair of angles congruent. I have a pair of sides with three tick marks a pair of sides with two tick marks. And you can see that 
this yellow angle is not between the green and blue. This yellow angle is between the green and blue. This is none of our uh, shortcuts, so we'll just say not congruent. They might be congruent. They kind of look congruent, but we don't have enough information. Over here, one of the things that we always want to look for outside of um, reflexive property would be vertical angles. So I have vertical angles. So those two angles are congruent. I also have two angles with two arcs, two angles with one arc. So I have three pairs of congruent angles. The trouble here is I don't know anything about the sides. And so far, all of our shortcuts require us to know at least one pair of congruent sides. So even though they might be congruent, we don't have enough information. So we're going to say not congruent. So I want you to go ahead and give these three a try. Uh, and then listen for the answers. So my first one, I had a reflexive property existing. So I have a pair of congruent sides. I have a pair of angles with one arc, a pair of angles with two arcs. And just like the one we did earlier, that purple side is not in between the green and yellow. So I have angle, angle, side. Over here, I have a pair of angles with one arc. I have pair of sides with one tick mark each and then I have vertical angles it doesn't matter that they're both 90 degrees they're definitely congruent and that green side in each triangle is touching both the purple and the yellow angles that I have marked up so that's an angle side angle the side is between the angles and in this last example just like we did previously we have three pairs of congruent angles but we know nothing about the sides and so therefore, uh, we can't say that they're congruent triangles. They might be, they look the same, but we don't have enough information to say that they are. So that's it for today. Uh, make sure if you have any questions, you do ask in class next time, and uh, we can certainly do some practice together.